Hi, Lee Phillips here. Yep, I'm an attorney, don't hold that against me. I'm gonna talk about uh, can you reduce your W-2 income by having a rental unit? Because in your rental unit, you get uh, all these deductions and you get the depreciation on the property and that's a big, big, big deduction. In fact, uh, we say in real estate, you're creating an economic gain at a tax loss. Think about that for a minute. We're making money, but we're losing taxes. That's pretty cool. In 1986, uh, before then, we we could the the executives had their two million dollar W two salary, and they would the accountants were saying go out and buy real estate, and they would take the depreciation and all of the losses associated with real estate, and they would apply them directly against their W two income. So the executives were wiping out their $2 million W-2 income by having a couple of pieces of rental property. And they didn't care what they paid for the rental property. They could pay one and a half times market because they saved all of the taxes over here. And they were driving the prices up to where nobody could afford a piece of property. So Congress came along and said, no, 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 we're not gonna do this. So they passed a law in 1986 that said, you have your ordinary income, your W-2 income over here, and you have what we call passive income over here in the real estate bucket. All of the income you get from real estate, all of the deductions, the losses, the everything is in this passive bucket. And this passive bucket cannot be moved over and affect the non-passive bucket is actually what they call it, your W-2 income. So after 86, we couldn't take the deductions and stuff from real estate and move them over to affect our standard ordinary income. Now, that means, yeah, I can basically get the rents and stuff from my, in, from my rental property and I don't pay any tax on it, because the depreciation and, and expenses associated with the real estate offset that income. Well, the depreciation really isn't an out-of-pocket uh, expense that I pay. So basically, I'm getting income in the form of rents, passive income, and I'm not paying any taxes on it. That's pretty cool, guys. Man, I wish I could take it over and make it so that my day job, my W-2 job, we wiped out the income here. Can't do that, except two ways. One way is you become a real estate professional, and that's a big deal. Uh, now, I've, I've got a, uh, a, a little write-up on how you become a real estate professional. You can get that if you just... Uh, write info, I-N-F-O, at Legalese, that's the name of the, the company, L-E-G-A-L-E-E-S.com, info at Legalese.com, and I can get you the parameters for a real estate professional. You got to spend a thousand hours, you got to do this, you got to do that. And the short story is, it's impossible for you to have a day job and to be a real estate professional. Now, wait a minute. One spouse could be the real estate professional. The other spouse could be the wage earner. Okay, we can do that because we file a joint return, don't we? So that's a possibility. The other way, the other exception to this passive income and non-passive income bucket thing the other exception is short-term rentals. There are a lot of rules associated with short-term rentals. Uh, but if I take a short-term rental, then it isn't real estate as far as the IRS is concerned. It's a business. So the depreciation and stuff on the property in the short-term rental can go directly against my W-2 income. That's pretty cool, guys. We're almost back to pre-1986 if we play with short-term rentals. And that's one reason 
the Airbnbs and this short-term rental crap has taken off in the last years uh, because I can take this economic loss or economic gain that gives me a tax loss and I can apply the tax loss against my W-2 income. So two ways I can use real estate to affect my W-2 income. One is real estate professional. The other is short-term rentals. Like I say, there's a lot of rules about short-term rentals. If you want a summary of that one, email info at legalese.com and we'll send you out a summary of short-term rental stuff. Now don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us the likes and the loves and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but if you need the two, uh, either short-term rental or the other, uh, then we can do it. In fact, I've prepared a course, eight hours worth of instruction and all of the documentation associated with it on real estate taxation. And what I'm going to give you is just a little teeny chunk of that on short-term rentals and on the uh, real estate professional. We go into great detail. But uh, you need to know these two things and you might as well use the tax code best you can. Save some taxes, huh guys?